What's up everyone and welcome to Monday's edition of Reptile News. Now I'm doing things slightly different which I don't think and let me rewind a little bit. Um, I made a post last week that I was going to be doing things slightly different and that's what I'm trying this week and on your end you're not really or you shouldn't really see any difference at all but on my end it's going to make keeping up with the schedule a whole lot easier so i'm really hoping it works out i'm kind of excited for it and don't know why i haven't thought about it before but now let's get on with the news and we're going to start off in burlingham alabama where a child was bitten by a copperhead at the burlingham zoo now i'm a little irritated that i haven't heard as of this recording at least uh, any information on this story to make me feel very good apparently the child was taken to the hospital they say that the snake was taken to a secure location so they can uh, get everything figured out they do mention that this happened in the trails of africa exhibit and this was not one of the zoo snakes this was just a wild snake which is apparently pretty common over there and w one of the most I don't want to say biting because that sounds stupid it's it's one of the snakes per year that apparently bites the most people in Alabama and while watching this little video on this news story this uh, PR guy seems like he's really concerned about the zoo's image I can understand that because a child at the zoo got bit by a snake I can see how you know mass media might jump on that and try to say it was one of the zoo snakes but it was not one of the zoo snakes it was just a wild snake on a trail with a child um, a mixture of very bad luck and I do hope the child makes a full recovery and I also do hope we hear an update to this story that he did make a recovery or something and now we're gonna move on to South Carolina and our douchebag of the day we've got two of them today and you know it might seem like I enjoy doing this but I really don't enjoy doing this because these are people in our very own community and I really hate all the negativity going on in our community right now but when when somebody does something wrong you just I really feel like it's my duty it's our duty to let everybody know how much we don't support them and that they did wrong and hopefully they will learn their lesson if they choose to remain in our community the few that are continually welcome here and that's why we're gonna talk about 35 year old Stephen Baker and 68 year old Ray Robertson from South Carolina apparently both of these men illegally sold spotted turtles to undercover fish and wildlife agents not only on one occasion at some shows more specifically the Daytona Beach Reptile Breeders Expo but also sent them through the mail spotted turtles in exchange for cash now unfortunately and I say unfortunately because I believe that wildlife laws I believe the hammer should come down because it's it's such a serious thing these animals are not protected because they don't need it they they need it and to be honest spotted turtles are not endangered but they are protected and they do require a permit to possess move collect sell import export anything and these two douchebags did not have said permit when they sold these turtles to the undercover fish and wildlife agents while Ray Robertson got off on time served Stephen was a little bit less lucky and was sentenced to three years probation on wildlife and weapons charges and this is where you chime in community what do you think about this story what do you think about these guys do any of you know them I'd like to hear are these really good guys that just got caught up in a bad thing or are are these just the normal douchebags that we hear breaking the law and making life harder for us day in and day out leave a text comment down below and let me know what you think and now we're gonna move on to today in awesome and that is in Missouri haven't we had a lot of awesome in Missouri lately it seems like or maybe that's a lot of not awesome in Missouri anyway we're talking about Missouri again where apparently a family has found a two-headed snake out in the wild now they decided to take this snake in and give it a little home and a little fish tank and to me it doesn't say what it is but it really looks to me I'll put a picture picture up somewhere somewhere on this screen will be a picture uh, for you guys to see it looks like a ring neck snake to me I'm not familiar with all the snakes indigenous and non-indigenous to Missouri but this looks very similar to the ring neck snakes we have here in California and researchers apparently say that the snake is lucky because two-headed snakes in the wild don't live very long and on that note of awesome that's where I'm gonna end today's show if you'd like to read any more about these stories that links right down below here in the description and as always if you're still watching my name is Jason White now you know what's going on in the reptile world be good to each other and we'll see you Wednesday.